Holy Roly Guacamole at the 10 Minute Cooking School. Yeah, Batman, check it out. We have chicken for chow. We have mince meat. We have steak. And last but not least, a little bit of liver. Now you can mix in a little bit of guineas and offal if you can find them these days in supermarkets and not much of that. And we'll get to the veggies. Oh, there's a fly, but go in. Veggies, a variety of vegetables, mainly the really heavy, thick ones. Here's some broccoli. Cabbage. Cauliflower. Parsnips and turnips. And last but not least, sweet potato. Or potato, if your ignorant person doesn't know how to talk properly. There's a bit of a base, although not really because everything is used equally in three parts. There's two main bases that I use. Number one, couscous. One cup, couscous. Which you put in hot water, the equivalent of the same amount. I one cup. Now I'm saying one cup because I'm feeding five dogs. Uh, that's a bit much. That'll only take about five minutes. You can use cold water, but it'll take ages. So one minute, two minutes, a few minutes, maybe five minutes. They'll come up, which I'll show you in a minute. The other one is of which you put not one, but two cups of hot water. Well, it can be cold water. You heat that on the oven for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Now, I know it says 10 minute cooking skill, but sometimes things like chicken and this, for example, will take a bit longer. Whereas the couscous, not as much. You can see that's already coming up. That has a lot of great nutrients for them. Now, I haven't done what you'll often see in dog food, Dr. Google stuff, um, if you're doing it yourself, which is using rice. Do not use white rice, there's nothing in it for the doggies. They say brown rice. Brown rice, yeah, you can use brown rice, but lentils generally have a, a lot more stuff than the brown rice, the refined brown rice you get in the supermarket. So you generally stick to lentils, and I find that the dogs prefer the couscous or the lentils over the brown rice, so I generally stick to these two as a, a good base. Because I'm cooking, well, it's not really cooking, it's preparing more than cooking. Um, yes, the lentils are cooked, the chicken is cooked, um, the couscous is sort of cooked, it just soaks and comes up and it goes soft, so that's a very limited sort of cooking. Um, the meat is not really cooked, as in the red meat, because it's really just singed to get a bit of the flavour um, uh, into some water, red meat, but I'll do that right now and show you. Okay, so I just put a, the tiniest bit of water in there, you can see that virtually. Now, if you're not cooking the meat right through, because you want to keep some of the nutrients in there, and yes, I know there's all these arguments about, oh, but it might have disease, or it might have um, chemicals and shit, and you have to cook it to strap it all out. Yeah, you might get rid of all that out, but then you'll probably kill all the nutrients. Anyway, so we'll point. But, you know, the dogs live in the wild, they've been doing so for two million years or more. So, yeah, um, rare, I would say, is, is what we do here in the Chicken for Chow Michelin Star restaurant. And as you can see, our patrons absolutely love it. Right. Unfortunately, we do not have a real stove in the coach house. We have this thing, this electric hot plate thing, because I only generally, if I had a choice, cook with gas. Gas. Tops. However, we shall carry on. Just gonna go something simple today, the beef mints. Okay, so we'll get that up and running. Throw it in. I also grab the paper. And yes, I have washed my hands before I've done all this. Um, and I squeeze out, well, there's not much here actually, squeeze out the drops of blood to go into the gravy. A little bit of water uh, and a tiny, tiny bit of oil. Right, and then that gets all recycled. Don't forget your big wooden spoon. Give that a big mix around. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and it's on. Oh, might be an idea to turn on the actual hot plate. So we just go up to not very high, then half five, maybe six to get it going, and then might drop down. Maybe even go to seven, get it nice and hot, then drop it down and just let it sit there. And again, we're after whatever's coming out of this meat, including a bit of egg water, I say, oil, some fat. Again, I can't reiterate this enough. Um, we're not cooking this right through, so for a little that, moisture's in. Well, Oops, cooking next door to the lentils still now turn down and you cook lentils no differently to rice as in well a bit different in that there's a bit more water say white rice is normally one and a half cups of water to uh, a cup of rice and you cook it like that you bring it to boil and then you let it simmer down and then it gets nice and fluffy rice without having any excess water um, same for lentils lentils a bit like brown rice a bit more you put two cups of water to the lentils maybe slightly less depending on the heat and what's going on there um slightly less water but generally it's that two cups i'd say one and three quarters two cup water and the same you bring it to boil and then you just let it bring it right down just let it simmer for about 15 20 minutes and then it's ready rice is quicker it's about 10 or 12 minutes okay veggies okay so i already put out a little bit of broccoli here um, I don't really go mad on lots of cauliflower, just the mix. And this is for today because obviously we've got a few different veggies we can use. And these veggies are going to be completely uncooked. Now, we've already had a bit of a wash, we'll just get rid of a bit of a rough end there. Of the sweet potato and the sweet potato. Um, how much are you going to use? Mm -hmm. I'm not getting any sort of amounts here. You just go with the flow. Now, what I don't do is I don't peel the skin off. And the reason I don't peel the skin off is because the skin itself has got nutrients and you don't exactly see wild animals, including doggies, go out in the wild with potato peel, do you, right? So, well, yeah, wash it, but then leave the skin on. A bit more rough, which is good. And like I said, the skin, there is some old wives' tale about, I don't know about sweet potato, but um, normal potato, there's, there's more nutrients in the skin than there is actually in the potato itself. I don't know if that's true. But anyway, uh, or maybe there's different nutrients in it. Now, I used to use carrot thing. I'm trying to do the thing. You've got green, white, red, you know, or orange veggies to get all the different varieties of your um, vitamins and what have you. So, but, and someone told me that um, dogs, and I think it was when I spoke with, when I took Jess Jessie to the vet, who's a, um, Jessie's diabetic. We'll come to her in a minute. She doesn't get this, by the way, or she sort of does. I do sneak in sometimes, but I'll tell you that. Wait, um, the vet said that carrots aren't as good as sweet potato, because sweet potato has everything, got everything carrots have, being in the orange group, but um, they just said, take my word for it. So, I, I stopped giving carrots and started giving sweet potato. Now, a lot of people give normal potato, and I said they give normal potato and, and rice, but I 
massive white lights as a chili, but I don't give normal potato because you've got potato and then you've got the orange goodness in it, mate. And then what I do with this is whizzy! Yay! Da-da-da-da! Whizzy, 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 whizzy! My favourite part of the show is the whizzer! And here's the whizzer! Yeah, whizzer! I love the whizzer! <coughs> okay. Whizzy, whizzy! Yay! Just stuff it in. Stuff it in. And whizz away. Mix it up a bit. Now, back to our meaty meats. As you can see, that's just a little bit singed on the bottom of all this, right? And at this point, needs a little bit more cooking, actually. Cooking as in a little bit more singeing, so I'm just gonna let that get a little bit hotter. I don't want all the pink to disappear. I want it to be slightly pink. That, that's a bit too, that's still a bit too pink everywhere. I just want it slightly pink. Because I said, it's not so much cooking it, it's more to cook it to get the juices out, to get really lovely flavors. You can see the juices down there. See the juicy, 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 juicies accumulating to go through, which makes it more, when I put in the uh, uh, the couscous and the veggies, it, it just makes it a little bit, I believe, more, pal blah, 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 more palatable for the doggy. Because doggies like flavour too. I, I don't know. I think they do. They seem to go for it more if it's got flavour than if it hasn't got flavour, from my observation anyway. Now, nothing is ever wasted, by the way. While that's cooking a little bit, I'll just throw these bits in. Every little... Crap is you. Even from the wizard. Use everything that's in the wizard. All these bits around here. Now, at this point, you can, if you want, introduce a little bit of liver. Now, liver is never to be a meal on its own as a meat, right? Um, it's always, um, it's not a condiment, that's all, but it's just really to give them, again, those extra vitamins and nutrients they might not be getting out of the other meat, the regular meat off bone. They do need a bit of offal as well, and because liver is so rich in uh, nutrients and vitamins, it's, it's, um, it's a bit too rich if you try to give them all of it. You know, so what I do is, I don't do this every meal, but every just now and again, maybe uh, once or twice a week, um, is chop up a bit of liver, throw that in too. And again, you're not cooking the liver um, in a way, you're really just singeing it along with the rest of the meat. I usually put a bit more liver than that, a little tiny bit more, but this is for demonstration purposes only. So here we go, turn that down a bit on the stove, and that's getting to generally where I like to see it, okay? It's not too cooked, it's not sort of undercooked, <laughs> but that's the whole point. Um, just keep chopping it up, mixing it up, right? At this point, I would put in the liver, and mix the whole lot. These are all the veggies, these, these are the veggies that were in the wizard, raw vegetables. A whole lot. So you can see, there's more veggies here and here. You combine those two than meat. You know, it's not like a whole big meat fest is going on. Uh, you might want to re-whiz those or, or do something else with those. Uh, dogs don't tend to eat the big bits, but they do tend to eat the bits like that. That's the sort of consistency you want. Right, so just simply dump. Now, I'm not putting all this couscous in. I'm pulling about half or maybe even a bit less than half because what I do is I keep the rest of it for the... um. The, the next day, uh, because we don't need all of that. Because as you can see, you know, there's a lot of veggie stuff there. Now another thing that I do at this point is throw in some juice ditchy corn, which you'll see in another section of this video. So you just gotta sprinkle it over. I'm gonna keep some for Jessie for her her part in all this. She eats different the chicken fat. Why not? And then mix it really, really, really in. This is still on heat, but as you can see, it's only on number numero uno. Looks quite good, doesn't it? Hmm. Looks like some sort of Indian meal or something. Anyway, so really, what I do is I turn the pan around as I'm mixing it. Sort of like a cement mixer. Yeah, that's where I got this from. Working on building site. Yeah, showed you how to mix things really, really well. In fact, that is it. Done. I'm going to turn the oven, well, sorry, hot plate off that particular hot plate because the lentils are still going on the other side. And I'm going to cover it, if I can find the lid. And covering it so it lets any... Um, water escaping collect here that drops back in. Again, you're keeping it all the juices and all the taste and flavour trapped inside, that's the idea. And just push that aside and let that cool down. Now there is another part to that, but I'll get to it, but there's no more cooking, that's it, that's done. That's probably five minutes, you know, uh, if you just went from eight way to go, or ten minutes the most, okay? That's how quick it can be. Oh, almost forgot! Talking about bits and pieces to add, like the liver, again, this is not something you're going to do every day for the meals, because it'll be too much. Uh, is cracking an egg, or in this case, before, let me set up properly, in this case, two, again, this is for five little doggies. Now, simply raw egg, mix it all in, and as I said, yet again, this is not every single day, this is only, um, every couple of days, you know? No, not every couple of days, sorry, twice a week, you know? Twice a week, put in some awful liver, kidney, gut, brains, whatever, um, toenails, you know? So, and, you know, a couple of eggs. So, so that way, you're pretty much covering, hopefully, what animals should be getting. Um, and because, also, you've got to remember that they're not always eating every day in the jungle, right? They're, they're all on the prairies, you know, they're just picking up the odd bits here and there. And they're not going to find eggs every day, they're not going to find liver every day, you, you get the picture. So 
that. Put that back. <coughs> so put that back. Let it cool down over there. There is one little step which you, which is not you don't have to do, but I'm going to do it when it's cooled down. Okay. At the great risk of contradicting myself, the chicken <coughs> is going to be cooked thoroughly right through, unlike the red meats and the livers and kidneys and what have you, which are not. Now, by all means, if you can find organic chicken and be 100% sure it's organic, no chemicals, no hormones, no nothing, running around the sunshine, feel free to feed it raw chicken, no problem. But I can't find any organic anything here, um, apart from a few vegetables, no organic meat, no organic chicken. So when I do chicken, I cook for two reasons. One is to get rid of any nasties, hopefully. Um, and this is half because it's going to be fully cooked and I do keep the gravy right remember the gravy gotta keep the all the blood and bits to put in as well I, don't need, I think you're meant to cook it in the string to get it together but I don't need the string okay now give it a good wash a little wash you see that you see that do you see that right every time I get one of these chickens from this supermarket it's all got that's a broken wing now I don't know that's in the process of and they put them through the big machine after they're dead to get all the feathers off, which might be the case, or they deliberately break the wing uh, for some reason or other. It looks a bit whatever. Uh, right, you can wash now. Run some cold water. No spring. There's no oil, it's just simply water. And this filling the tray. And this is what the chicken is going to cook in in the oven. Now this is not being filled to the top because it's too much water. It gets filled about halfway or so. And then I take it over here to the oven. La chicken! Buck, 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 buck. Mm. Close the door. Now these ovens, I do believe in this electric oven fan force, which are absolutely great, great. They don't leak, and they've got better control than the gas ovens, and they cook really well and really evenly, so I'm a true believer in electric ovens. I'm not a true believer in these electric hot tops, or whatever you call them anyway. Now, temperatures and times. Set the temperature, I, I do it, it doesn't have to be that, about 180, 185. There's gonna be fan force for an hour, right? And then after one hour, I have a, I set my alarm clock on my phone, I come back, and then I turn it from fan to normal oven. And there's a reason I do this. Uh, one, if it's on for like an hour and a half, which is the cooking time that I'm using, then if it's on for an hour and a half with fan force, then it tends to overcook, right? You have to pull out and it's a bit drier and it's not very nice. Now I want a nice even cooked chocolate, I drop it down after an hour to a normal unfan force, kick temperature for half an hour. So one and a half hours, one hour fan force, half an hour night, and then it turns out perfect. And you may be thinking, well, all that water would turn out to be some sloppy piece of shit, but it doesn't and you'll see in a moment, in a moment being one and a half hours, what it does turn out like, and the water is used to partially cook it, but also, well, it does cook it, but also for all the flavours run through um, into the water, out, out of the chicken, any fat, there's no fat added, there's no oil added, just water, runs into the, all the fat, well, some of the fat, most of the fat goes into the water, and other chicken juices, and that's used for the chicken sauce, which the dogs love. Ding, 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 chicken is already, yay! Oh, stingies, stingies, hot stingies! Look at that! Beautiful chicken for chow. Look at that beautiful chicken cooked just right, not too raw, not overcooked, perfect. Needs little bath of water, and even the skin. It's crispy. Yes. And you probably thought it was going to be soggy doggy from like a swimming pool. It's draining the chicken. Let the chicken drain. Gonna hold it in case it wants to fall down, but then move it over. Chicken be perfect. And then just choppy, 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 choppy. Yay! Let that cool. Chop it up. Get let the, some of the juices out. Let some of the water out. And see. Crispy skin. Crispy, crispy, crispy. Perfectly cooked, right through. Okay, yay, done. Now, next bit, take the Juicy Lucy. The chicken was cooked in, you see all that fat and juicy's gone in. Transfer it to a pot, let that cool down. Now you're gonna finish off this bowl and put it from pot to the bowl. I'll use that little bit and then wash it out, put it in. And then you've got juice. You put in a, a couple, a few tablespoons of juice with every meal on top of it. So the juice goes through the doggy meal. You can keep this in the fridge, obviously. Uh, for you can keep it up to about a week, five days. I usually cook a ch uh, chicken maybe every four days, five days, uh, because I do shopping between 10 and 14 days for the doggies and use only two chickens through that period. So I, I make the juice spread itself out over the different meals for that length of time. And the doggies love it. <laughs> Chicken for chow, baby! It's a chicken! Four! Chow! Hey! Chicken for chow, chicken for chow! Go, 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 go! Chicken! Four! Chow! Hey! Chicken for chow, baby! Chicken for chow! Now, after that's 
Curl down, we are ready to rock and roll. Well, almost. Now, there's one more thing you can do if you're still worried about the doggies not getting all their nutrients and goodies and stuff if you don't think the Michelin star food is good enough. Well, ha, you can mix some dry food in it. This one comes from the vet. Vet Care Nutrition. Highly expensive, right? Um, and you can simply open them up. You don't put too much. Just give it a little wrinkle wrinkle dry food. Now, this will also give them something to chew on. Back. Whee! Yuppie! Alright, you go mixy, mixy, mixy. So now it looks a bit like some sort of Mexican dinner. The beans, round beans, red kidney beans. Now, as I said, that, that will, it makes it, I, I don't put that in early, I put that in just before, before it's served. Because if you leave it in, you put it in early, maybe it'll just go soft and soggy. And that defeats the purpose of something hard to grip between their teeth and have a bit of chomp on. Um, that it is, they don't, unless they're really starving, they actually don't like the dry dog food on the same. Like they'll eat it uh, eventually. But if you do this, then it's all good, bro. So, here we go! They tend to put in two big, they don't have to eat that much, I mean, they're only small dogs. They just couple of scoops of food, you know, if you measure it, it probably comes about, I don't know, they... Yeah. Now, if you can cook enough food for tomorrow, uh, I would not do more than two days worth. Um, as you can see, there's still a fair bit left over there. Now that is more than enough for a little doggy. And in fact, if you talk with a nutritionist, an uh, animal vet nutritionist, specialist, they'll probably tell you that this is overfeeding, funny enough. Um, it doesn't look like it's that much, right? But again, they're only tiny little doggies. Now, I know you're supposed to put the bowl on and then measure it, but... Uh, you get the difference between the bowl, but that's... That's coming at 400 grams. That's like, you know, nearly half a kilo. Uh, that's a lot. You know, they, they probably should be eating... If you look at Dr. Google, they'll probably say they should be eating about 300. But not 400. But I like my dogs. Fat! Really, really fat! Huge and fat! Big fat doggies! That's what we want! But they get a lot of exercise around here. They're out in the farm. Randall takes them on huge motherfucking walks everywhere all around the place. So, they're all very healthy. You know, they're all very the right weight. When they go to the vet, um, they often go to the vet just for checkups. And they've always been the correct weight for their size. So I continue with this size. Say about foot round, about 40 gram meals. You can use a bit more for 50 sometimes. But that's okay. And now the proof is in the eating. Now, babies get special treatment. Beavis gets his own private table in the chicken for chow restaurant. Come on, there's a reason for this. Yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, chum chum chum, yum 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 yum. And the reason is he used to eat too quick, so we actually close the door, believe it or not. We leave him get alone. Dinner. And so Chow gets chomp 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 chomp. Oh yeah. So Chow is over there. Look at that. Yum 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 yum. Funny. Yum 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 yum. Look at that. Pig out, baby. Pig out. And butt head. And a little bunny. Go, yeah, buddy. Look at that. Little vacuum cleaner. And last but not least, Nero the Hero. Look at that. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Oh, I love, love, love you. Oh, yeah, love that. You can hear all the hungry eaters behind me. What is this strange thing? This is called a slow eater. For the doggies. The reason it's shaped like that is all the food goes in these bits here. That's because when Chow and Beavis used to eating together, they would just do vacuum cleaner. Chow is okay, but Beavis was immediately throwing up all his dinner immediately after because he just vacuumed it down. He doesn't have enough time, and as the vet explained, there's no time to masticate, and there's no time um, for the saliva to work in, and he just wasn't chewing his food properly, and he just throw it off, so he was never um, eating properly. So now what's happening is he used to, he went from that to slow him down, and he was put in the other room, so there's no competition. And now that happens, here's Chow trying to sneak in on Butthead. Now that happens, um, they both eat normally. Now they don't vacuum it all up like, like as fast as they used to, because the competition has been removed. Wonderful, okay, come on guys. Now it's out time for the doggies to go out, run around in the sunshine. Have to. Come on, guys. Have to get babies. Come on, babies. Hey, baby. Oh, baby ate all his food. Of course he did. There it is. Hey. All right. Come on. There you go. Run, 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 run. Bye, bye. Don't forget to tip the waiter. There is one dog, unfortunately who is not able to get into the chicken for Chow Michelin star restaurant. That dog is...
Jesse. Jesse. She's not a happy camper. And she's not here when the other dogs are eating. Because she'll get jealous and wonder why the fuck am I eating that? Because all Jesse gets is this. Because of Jesse's diabetes, she is only allowed to eat 287 grams of food a day. I don't know how much that is in pounds, look it up. Not much. Probably not even half a pound. But anyway, Jesse is on the Taliban diet. It looks like this. Now because that weighs about 200 and 100, so 121, I think. Uh, plus 287, about 400 and something grams. So, put it out. Four hundred and eight grams. Now it's twenty seven plus the bowl. Precisely. But I do cheat a little bit to make it a bit nicer for her because as you can see, this Taliban food. Now remember if you're in Kabul, this is all you're gonna eat now, right? You're gonna eat dog food, dry dog food, that's all you're gonna eat under the Taliban. So she gets the Taliban food. What I do put some chicken sauce over the top. Give it a bit of a mix. So it's a bit more palatable for her, right? And at other times, I will grab a bunch of the normal dog food, take a bunch of that out, put normal dog food, the dog food that I cook, right, or I make, um, in and mix it up so, so it's not this boring, horrible Taliban food that she eats every day, like, you know, like she's in some sort of Russian death camp or something as well. And that is the end of the show! Yay!